Howdy folks, welcome back to Arkle Kenny Homestead here in Southern Ireland. You can probably tell from the racket in those first few clips that our Istabreeze wind turbine has finally had its first failure, which after nine months of continuous operation in some pretty rough conditions is to be expected. So today we're going to drop the mass down, open up the generator and find out what makes these machines fail and also find out what parts are required to keep them running on an annual basis. So let's drop it down and get stuck in. Rope snap there. Yeah. Did it snap? Yeah. I hate this. How bad? <laughs> no, you don't. You I love am, it really. No, I'm actually. I'm not going to back up. Yes, you are. I'm not. I'm oh, yes, you are. You can get someone else to put her up with you. Oh, I'm not come doing on. it. Go away, you big this softie. This is like four times, you know, two times up, two times down, and I swear to God, I'm not doing it again. <laughs> oh my God, cool. I'm shaking in my boots. Uh. She wouldn't like to be boring otherwise. I know, I'm not doing it again. I mean, you can get the last time. No, I'm serious. Overheated and blew apart like a fuse. Now that is not good. So, with a little bit of the Arthur Fonzarelli method of mechanical persuasion, we have it all opened and we can see our individual components. And on the end plate here, I can feel see that free play, that lateral movement this way. That bearings failed. Okay, so two bearings. So what we need to do next is we need to now test the resistance value of the phases. Now we don't have a spec sheet on these devices and they are quite hard to find from this debris as to what the resistance value should be of those phases. So all we can check at this point is that they all have the same resistance value or near enough the same to know that they aren't shorted or open circuited. So let's go ahead and do that next. So what we do is we just check between the phases. So I'm going to take one phase here on one end. It doesn't matter which end you use. And another phase on the other end. And let's have a look at our given resistance value. 1.1 ohms. 1, 1.1. Okay. Try and get this light to come back on again. There we go. Okay, so now let's check second phase. Not. 0.91, 1.1. Okay, that's great news. That's great news. They are both equal. So the first two phases are equal value. So let's check the third. 0.9. Holding steady at 0.91. Okay, so all three phases are measuring the same. Looking at that discoloration, it's a pretty obvious indicator that that wire heated up internally melted the insulation, heated up to the point then where the structure of the wire was compromised itself. I would like to see, is the wiring on the 48 volt models or some of the other Istabreeze models, is that bigger or is this a standard rotating collar that they use across those models? So realistically, if I was looking at this from an outside perspective and I said, well, which one is easiest to live with? I would say just stick with solar and stay away from the wind. The wind is only ever a backup to what your solar can generate. It's the generator that will give you a little bit of something when the sun doesn't shine. In exchange for that, you have massive maintenance requirements. With these, it's a takedown and a rebuild at least once a year. So, stick with the solar maybe? I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. There's one final thing we haven't mentioned yet, and that's what operating conditions led to this failure. Well, simply enough, it was me. Every time the wind speed would exceed the turbine's rated output, which is 31 mile an hour, I would apply the brake. Recently, we had storm conditions where the wind speed was up to 80 mile an hour, where with the brake applied, the turbine was still rotating, albeit slowly, 
That will generate energy, which generates heat, which has nowhere to go, leading to the wiring failure. Now, the wind-safe models that Istabreeze produce might be a good solution to this problem, where when the wind speed gets to a certain strength, the whole propeller tilts back, reducing the speed, reducing the strain on the mast, and the wiring, which may already not be good enough. I don't know, I don't know what rotating collar is in the wind-safe models, and without personal experience, I can't actually give you a concrete answer on that one. So there you go, if you're thinking about buying an Istabreeze product, these are things you need to consider that you might not be considering from the get-go when looking at things. So anyway, with all that out of the way guys, there's something cool I want to share with you. We have started our own website, ArtleKennyHomestead.com. It's a place where we can share everything that we learned on this journey with you guys. But not only that, it's a place where we're going to sell some of the products that we make here on the homestead. And the first of those products is already on sale on the website. I'm not going to talk about it here now, but do go and check it out. It's a health and beauty product that really does work. So please do check out the website, guys. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video and found it useful. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Until then, please do check out the website. That's arkelkennyhomestead.com. And I will see you in the next one where we're going to rebuild this turbine. You'll be able to find out where to get replacement parts from and get some more specs on things. Do take care of yourselves out there. Good night, Rilesh and Boherlat. Slow live.